Hi, this is Robert Inklaar, and I am the Program Director of the Master in Economic Development and Globalization at the University of Groningen in the Netherlands. Our program is about understanding how the process of globalization influences economic development. And to illustrate this, I'm using the ele elephant chart introduced by Branko Vinanovic, a renowned expert on inequality and the holder of the Madison Chair at the Faculty of Economic and Business. The uh, elephant chart illustrates how, uh, the, the, how the income of people have grown with people ranked by their income uh, at the start of this period. Um, and the novelty is that this ranks people wherever they live. Um, what this shows is that the very poorest 5% of the, the population did not see uh, growth in, uh, in their income between the late 80s and the late 2000s. Moving across this chart, we see that especially when we move to the uh, the, the middle income countries, especially uh, major emerging economies like uh, China or India, we see much more rapid income growth uh, over this 20-year uh, period. Similarly, if we move all the way to the right, to the top of the tip of the trunk, we see the booming global elites, uh, the highly educated uh, uh, people in, in high-income countries, that have tended to benefit from uh, both automation and globalization. Similarly, these middle income uh, countries uh, they have seen many gains uh, in, uh, thanks to their integration into the global economy. However, moving to the bottom of this trunk, uh, we see a major challenge in the group of people in middle, middle class in rich countries that have been left behind. Uh, trends like automation, trends like offshoring uh, have, uh, seen, have led to stagnating uh, incomes. Uh, but the uh, globalization is not just a financial, not just a uh, trend in, in trade, but it's also a, a, a clearly financial development. Um, there have been, uh, and especially there, the link between uh, openness to uh, capital flows and uh, crises is very notable. Um, and uh, in this program, uh, we, pay, we pay special attention to questions like the linkages between the financial sector and the rest of the economy and how that is important for economic development. The other aspect of globalization we focus on is trade and in particular paying much attention to recent developments um, uh, of global value chains and uh, how that uh, influences uh, development. So one, one may wonder what distinguishes the uh, EDNG, the Economic Development and Globalization Program uh, from others. Now, first, of course, is the content. Uh, we, uh, this is a program that specializes in understanding the linkages between economic development and globalization. And uh, that gives us a, a very clear profile and a very clear set of uh, themes and topics we deal with. We are also a, an economics master. Um, so we use the tools of economic science to help us understand these developments. Um, that means we are relying on economic models, um, but an important distinction to compare to some other programs is that we deal with these models not by emphasizing their mathematical rigor and uh, spending uh, much time in, uh, in, in, in solving optimization problems, um, but uh, uh, trying to reason through these uh, in, an, uh, in, a, in a rigorous fashion. Um, as, we've, as I've also hopefully made clear is that we uh, engage clearly with uh, recent trends and developments around the world um, and that those are center stage and we again use the toolkit of economics to help us understand these developments. Um, in addition to this 
um, there's more content focus. We also have quite a lot of experience with building um, uh, your competences more broadly um, through classroom discussion, through writing and debating assignments, through quantitative assignments. Uh, and uh, exams are, are never multiple choice. So um, uh, these are clearly important. Um, moreover, uh, even though uh, in the current setting with uh, a lot of online teaching, uh, we still manage to engage our students in critical thinking and reflection. The master program in brief, it's a one year master which means that the thesis, uh, which is uh, 20 ECs, uh, uh, represents one third of the program. Uh, a quarter of the program consists of mandatory courses, uh, which means there's ample opportunity to tailor your program to, uh, to your desire. Um, there's, uh, there's an additional five courses that you're free to choose from a, uh, from a, a extensive list. Um, some of the names of these courses, uh, international banking and finance, global finance and growth, globalization debates, trade environment and growth. So these clearly indicate that the theme of this, this master program permeates all the different uh, courses within the master. Within the master, we do offer some ways of focusing, of uh, specializing in, in one of the particular areas. So we have a track, uh, a focus area that focuses on the link between the financial system and the rest of the economy, as well as one that focuses more on trade versus the rest of the economy. We also have double degree options uh, at our university's website for this master. You can find more information on these, but these allow you to take, uh, follow an extra year at a, at a, at a reputable school um, do a complementary program there that specializes in uh, in areas that uh, that have received somewhat less attention in this master, um, but still make a coherent whole. It is possible to combine your studies with an internship. Um, for instance, uh, in terms with writing your thesis at the uh, at Dutch Bureau of Economic Policy Analysis, uh, major banks, uh, there's, uh, there's contacts and experiences there, or to develop your competences more broadly by uh, spending some time at a company and uh, seeing how that works over there. Our graduates find a job, um, at least in normal times. Um, and where they find jobs is quite diverse. Uh, many end up in the financial sector, in consultancy, or in teaching or, uh, or research type jobs. Um, normally we'd have a student reflect on, uh, on their experiences with this program. Um, here are some um, from, uh, by uh, our, our current student, Andries Slechten. Um, who has been following this program for the past, uh, since September 2019, uh, after doing a pre-master at, uh, at our faculty. Um, he's clearly uh, enthusiastic about the program um, for many of the things that I've emphasized uh, so far, that it ties to current events, that it's relevant. Uh, it, he really enjoys these topics and the fact that he can make his choices in a way that it's that the program fits his interests. Um, it is certainly not a uh, not not a program that you can easily follow if you have no background in economics whatsoever. Um, it's also clearly a program where we where we're asking you to to spend time on it to learn something. Uh, but he's also very emphatic that this, these are good factors and that he would definitely recommend it. So I hope this uh, has given you some uh, background into our program. And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, for now, thank you very much.